Hello, Asif, you are on. Hi, hi. Good. Good. Finally, we succeeded to set this up together because if you, if somebody is watching live uh, or on the recording, actually, Asif is located somewhere in Norway. Uh, so it's uh, Eva. So it has been uh, a little bit complex to uh, set this up. So anyway, I hope that um, somebody is watching and all of you which will be watching this program, I'm sure you won't be disappointed because this is going to be a very excited. I'm very excited. I've been looking forward to uh, have this conversation with Asif. And uh, we've been discussing quite a while, right, as if about how we're going to set this up. And uh, we decided to, to have uh, background information. We decided not to go into uh, a kind of a typical talk show conversation where you're just going to have your opinion and I'm going to have my opinion. And, uh, you know, just back and, and forward and people can take whatever we say. Uh, we do have a purpose uh, with this. This is going to be a little bit more, let's say, educational. Uh, we're going to come up with information which are based on some uh, reliable sources. Uh, primarily, we decided that we're going to have this for Muslims uh, because we believe that uh, there is a great community of uh, faithful Muslims out there which uh, should be uh, willing to actually listen to what we're going to say. And so the, the theme of this uh, program, this is the first interview, the first program is, is the biblical Christ uh, confirming the Quran? And I'm sure that for many people, this is a quite intriguing uh, statement. Um, I'm sure you can, you can add a little bit to that, uh, Asif. What, what do you think Muslims are going to say about that? Well, uh, Thank you for having on me, uh, first of all, and uh, thanks to Eva for the introduction. And uh, uh, as a Muslim, I think I know what the Muslim got to say because there is no doubt that Jesus Christ is in the Quran. Uh, but do they or do we have a right understanding? So this is the question. Yeah, that's that's exactly what uh, one of the topics that we're going to. Uh, discuss about tonight. Before yes. we we going to go forth uh, with our discussion about especially this question, uh, we decided to have a little bit of background information about Christianity and Islam. Uh, I believe it's very important. We live in a day and age where a lot of people have certain opinions about Islam, certain opinions about Christianity. But is that so? How do we collect background information? How do we know if what we know is actually truth about Islam? So we've, uh, we've collected some, uh, I would say, mainstream uh, information about uh, Islam. And we're going to go through uh, these uh, slides here just uh, quickly um, to give some background information, as I said before. Um, so the mainstream belief is that Christianity started in, in Palestine approximately 33 years after uh, Jesus AD, where Islam started in uh, 622 AD uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, the mainstream belief about Christianity and Islam, it is said that Yeshua, the Son of God, or Jesus, as it is being called in, in the Western society, was the founder and within the Christianity, um, Jesus is believed to be the founder and the son of God. Now, the mainstream idea is also that uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad uh, was the founder of uh, Islam. But um, there is actually another opinion to that. And I would like to ask you, Asif, if you can add some, some comments to this. Yeah. Uh... I would like to comment on the second slide where uh, said Islam or the Prophet Muhammad uh, founded uh, Islam. Uh, this is not how we believe. This is how not, not how we uh, see it. We believe Islam started by God when he created Adam. 
because Islam is not a set of rules, is not uh, to do things or not to do things. Islam actually a state of being submissive to God. So uh, we cannot say and we don't believe and the Quran doesn't really Islam started by Prophet Muhammad back in uh, 622 AD in Saudi Arabia. No, we believe all the prophets come from God was teaching the same way to be submissive to God, to do his will. And, and then when I read the Bible for the first time in my life, absolutely uh, on the temple, uh, this is the uh, the most strong or uh, how to say it, the, the powerful way that I see that Jesus was the greatest Muslim on earth, the way he was submitting to himself to God the Father in heaven, uh, actually the great example for all of us to be uh, submissive or to be a uh, Muslim, if we say it in Arabic, Muslim is simply to be submissive to God or to to, uh, according to his will. So Islam is not founded by Prophet Muhammad 622. No, Islam is a st state of being. And since uh, the first human was created, Islam was there, the way of life, as the way of life. All right, thanks. Uh, and we'll just go back to our slides here. Uh, thank you for the information, Asif. I think it's very important to to pinpoint exactly this information because as I said before, there is a mainstream idea, and especially of something which is being propagated through through the media. Um, the next uh, yeah. information here we'll like to bring forth is that Christianity, which was founded by Jesus Christ, that's what is being believed, was crucified, resurrected around AD 30, Jerusalem, and also after his resurrection, his followers came to uh, believe in him as the Christ. Uh, the Messiah. Now, um, I'm just referring to your comments before uh, about the Islam and uh, that information that you already uh, mentioned before. Spread of each faith, Christianity, uh, by the end of the fourth century, Christianity spread across the entire Roman Empire and beyond. That's the early expansion where Islam within uh, 12 years uh, covered the entire Arabian Peninsula after 100 years stretched from Spain to Southeast Asia. And uh, we'll see later in our presentation that Islam as a religion covers um, a big part of the Middle East and also spread other, in other places. Some terms for followers. Um, Followers, yes, of course, Christian and Muslims. Uh, the so-called clergy class is Christianity. Uh, within Christianity uh, is uh, bishops, pastor, minister, uh, where in Islam uh, we have uh, imams. Um, that's, that's also a, something which uh, in a few seconds I would ask you, Asif, to comment on because what let's say I believed about Islam that everybody was just meeting in a mosque where Christian in a church in a chapel where or where the Bible the Bible is saying where two or three are gathered uh, and that they worship in Christianity most of uh, Christianity worship on Sunday but there are also groups as the Seventh-day Adventists and other Seventh-day Baptists and other groups which are actually worshiping on uh, Saturday, which is the Sabbath <coughs> of the Bible, um, but there is a question mark here in regard in, in regards to Friday. Is that the correct day of worship for Muslims? We don't have a worshiping days. Actually, when I studied the Quran and the Bible, I never come across to uh, that we should worship in this day or worship on that day. Actually, day of worship not existed, but uh, when we check the Bible and the Quran, we find the day of rest. And when God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments, we were commanded to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, but not doing any work, and allowing all household to cease from work. Remember the Sabbath day, God said, to keep it holy. As I uh, explained there on the first slide, uh, being Muslim or Christian, the same to me. Uh, is not just to worship certain, certain days, 
Being Muslim, in my understanding, is a state of being, same as Christianity. So when we worship God, we worship him in every single act, every single thought, every single word. So we cannot uh, squeeze this day or this worshiping in one single day or certain hours. But what we do in, um, in the church or the mosque is uh, together to share God's glory, to share God's blessing on us. Uh, and I don't, as a day of worship, I see it as a day of rest. But is it the Friday day of rest for as a Muslim? No. When we read in the Bible and the Quran, uh, the, the day of uh, uh, Friday, for example, is not the day of it's called on a Friday uh, prayer when it's around midday in the Middle East. Uh, it's called to, to stop working and come to remember God. So uh, Friday, according to the Quran, is not a day of worship. It's not day of rest. But uh, what makes it different from the other days is that God called us to stop working around midday. I studied the, the Bible and... Uh, I see how God led the Israelites later on the Christian. Mm. But uh, I believe that, that was the same purpose that God wants us also to stop working around the midday or on Friday and then uh, keep the Sabbath holy, rest on Sabbath. Wow, and okay. clearly I saw that in, in the Quran and the Bible. Wow. That, that, that's a very uh, interesting uh, subject. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with you. Um, but I'm also sure that you're basing your uh, conclusion here, your statement on, on the written word of God, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, most of the Christian will not agree with me, as you know. Uh, we have approximately around 2 billion Christian or they said so at least, uh, but the, the big majority of them, they don't uh, recognize the Sabbath as a day of rest. So uh, same with the Muslims, uh, they will not agree with me, but I know also most of the Christians don't agree with me. Uh, but as you said, uh, I invite all the listeners to, uh, to go back to the Bible, to go back to the Quran. Is there anything says that Friday or Sunday day of rest? No, but we have a clear command of God in the Bible. It's actually one of the Ten Commandments to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And for us as a Muslims, we have the Quran. Uh, there is no holidays. There is no worship days. But we have uh, uh, the Sabbath day or the Sept, as we say it in Arabic. So the Sept or just means as the Sabbath. And the Sabbath means to cease uh, from work, to stop working and uh, enjoy God's creation. Uh, again, yes, I know the Muslims and the Christians will not agree. Most of the Christians will not agree with me, but I'm talking to the Seventh-day Adventists who um, led by God to bring this truth back to uh, to the people. And uh, I know the Seventh-day Adventists will agree with me, but what I ask them to do is to go check the Quran and the Bible. I'm a simple man. I don't know anything, but I read and try to tell the people what I understand from what I'm reading. All right. Thanks, uh, thanks Asif. If you go Thank back you. to our slide here, the next um, just uh, information we'd like to have here is the original language in Christianity, which I believe it's important to have this background information. It's Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, and, and Latin, where the Islam, uh, Islamic religion has the Arabic language. Uh, within Christianity, the name of God is God, Yeshua, Jesus, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit in the Western society. Uh, then we have the Hebrew name, and uh, uh, within Islam, uh, God is called uh, Allah. The God of the Torah, which is mentioned in the Old Testament, it's actually Yahweh, Elohim, or Eloah in Hebrew. Um, we find its information in biblical books like Ezra or Daniel. Uh, he's called Elah. Uh, the Arabic Jews and Christian and Muslims, uh, they believe that God of Abraham is Allah. Uh, open, if we open an Arabic Bible, uh, you will find the word Allah on almost every page, used where the word God is used in uh, the English translation. And that is because Allah is Arabic and uh, means the one uh, God. Now, the next information is that 
the sacred books, the sacred text, is believed within Christianity to be the Old Testament or the New Testament, where in uh, Islam is uh, the Quran. Um, do, do you have some something to add here, uh, Asif? Yeah, uh, as a Muslim, my book is the Quran and the Bible. And this is not my choice, it is found in the Quran. Uh, there are many verses in the Quran, uh, for example, in chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 136, mm -hmm. says, uh, God asks us to say, we believe in Allah, which is God, and that which is revealed unto us, which is the Quran, and which was revealed unto Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, the tribes, and which Moses and Jesus received, and that which the prophet received from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them. And unto mm -hmm. him we have surrounded. So this is a commandment from God to me as a Muslim, a kind of declaration of faith that I cannot just say the Quran is in my book. No, this is not a choice. But I have to believe in, in all God's uh, revelation and that uh, including the Bible, New Testament, mm -hmm. Old Testament, and that, that's mentioned in different verses. The other one, for example, uh, I can chapter 4, 136. And uh, that was a really interesting one. I would love to read it if you allow me. Yes, sure. It says, all you believe, is talking to us as a Muslims, believe in God and his apostle, which is Prophet Muhammad, and the scripture, which he, God, has sent to his apostle, which is the Quran, I understand, and the scripture which he sent to those before him. Any who God, his angels, his books, and his apostles on the day of the judgment had gone far, far astray. So uh, this is a very interesting statement because it says, any who deny God, his angels, and his books, it doesn't say his book, he's talking to the Muslims, talking, asking us to believe in the Prophet Muhammad in the Quran. Then he says, God says, if we deny God, his angels, and his books, and we understand his books is uh, the Quran, the Bible, and the uh, whatever God sent us. And if we deny this in the judgment day, we are, will be gone far astray. So it's not a choice for me to say, uh, my book is the Quran and I don't care about the Bible. I cannot say that because this mm -hmm. is a clear commandment in the Quran that I have to have faith in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I cannot say, yes, I believe in the Bible unless I know what it says. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So back again to uh, our presentation here, we have some uh, similarities. That's also one of the purposes of, of this presentation, of this video, to, to show that uh, both Christianity and Judaism, for that sake, and Islam has uh, quite a few similarities and origins. So uh, Christianity is God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, where and in Islam, uh, it is being said that there is only uh, one God and his name is Allah. And how do we know about God? Where do we gather the information from in, within Christianity? Prophets, Revelation, Yeshua, Jesus as recorded in both the Old and the New Testament. Where in Islam, we have through God's final prophet, which is Muhammad and recorded uh, in the Quran. Now, uh, there might be, um, well, actually, let's say how it is. It, there is, a, uh, I, I think, a great misunderstanding here. And I'm sure that what I, you're going about to say, Asif, is going to be quite controversial for a lot of people. But we're not here to make any provocative uh, statements either against Christianity or uh, Islam. But as a matter of fact, there is something very important which you have discovered in the Quran, uh, Asif, and I'm I'm gonna let you comment on this one. Well, uh, all the story started with the uh, question asked to me by a pastor back uh, in Istanbul uh, ten years ago. He asked us, "Who is Jesus Christ?" And I decided back then to teach the, the entire Christian world. Who was Jesus Christ? Because I don't believe that they believe that they were praying in Jesus' name, and that was um, blasphemy to me. So I decided to to learn 
about who was Jesus Christ and mm. tell them uh, the truth about Jesus Christ. So I start to search the Quran. Uh, and yes, uh, the Germans believe that uh, Isa al-Masih or Jesus Christ is a prophet. And that's true. He is a prophet. And uh, that's clearly mentioned in the Bible also. But when I read the Quran, uh, I find uh, Jesus Christ, yes, the messenger of God. And his word of God. And he is a spirit from God. But from you, no other person on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just I want to ask you this question. Interrupt you. Just isn't that so that the mainstream Muslim, uh, what is the opinion or the belief of the mainstream Muslims when it comes to Jesus? He's a nice man, great prophet. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. But when we read in the Quran, as I said, he's the word of God, as he is also in the Bible. He yeah. is a spirit from God. And the most exciting title, I would say, uh, the Messiah, he is so in the, in the Quran. Eleven times, actually, the Quran calls Jesus Christ as the Messiah. But what's more exciting, uh, what, what I find is like really exciting to me, uh, he is the Messiah, but the Quran doesn't give an explanation. What does it mean to be the Messiah? We don't know. Because the Bible doesn't really, I mean, the Quran doesn't really say what it means to be the Messiah. But in the Quran, we read many verses also. It's confirming the previous uh, scripture. And if we have a doubt, we have to ask uh, the people of the book, which mm -hmm. God sent them uh, scripture before that. And when, when we ask the people of the book and when we read about Jesus Christ as the Messiah in the Bible, for example, then we will understand what it means to be the Messiah. That's why it is true, yes, he's a prophet of God in, in the Quran, but he's also the word of God, his, his word that conveyed to Mary, actually, the Quran says. And this is where the, the word becomes flesh, as the, the Bible put it. So in the Bible, we read that the word uh, become flesh and dwelled among us. Uh, the Quran says uh, the word of God conveyed to Mary and become Jesus Christ. Mm. and his spirit from God and the Messiah. And when we read about what it means to be the Messiah in the Old Testament and the New Testament, then we, or me at least as a, as a Muslim, I understand who is Jesus Christ. He is more than prophet for sure. All right. Uh, that's, <clears throat> that's very uh, interesting indeed. And we are going to uh, have a little bit of more in-depth uh, conversation about this subject, who is Jesus in the uh, Quran. I hope the sound is okay. We had some uh, issues on our live stream uh, in the beginning, but uh, hopefully uh, now we're getting better. Anyway, this is being recorded uh, here in our studio, so we're going to have this uh, available on uh, YouTube uh, later on. So back to our presentation here. The next uh, subject is the death of Jesus. Um, it seems that there is a contradiction here in between Christianity where the Bible states that Jesus died by crucifixion and later resurrected where uh, the mainstream idea that is that Islam uh, promotes the idea that Jesus actually did not die but ascended into heaven and a disciple took uh, his place. Um, is, that, is that so, uh, Asif? Yeah. Uh, generally, Muslims believe that Jesus never died, but one of his disciples, um, they believe, or we believe, uh, generally Muslims believe that uh, God uh, changed one of his disciples' face to look like Jesus, and that uh, one of the disciples was crucified and uh, died. Actually, this topic takes a lot of my time. Uh, it mm. takes me years, actually, to come uh, into peace. Right. Uh, because my story started when I was searching who is Jesus Christ in the Quran, then uh, the Quran kind of led me back to the Bible. And when I start to read the Bible, compare with the Quran, read the Quran, compare with the Bible, I, I, I struggle a lot on many issues. And this topic was one of uh, the most difficult one to, to have a peace in it or to... Uh, to put it together, because I, I based my faith basically on the Quran and the Bible. And this topic was kind of uh, really difficult because the mainstream of Christianity also 
have a little uh, misunderstanding, mm. let's say, because here, as you stated, uh, Christianity believe that that by crucifixion. And I don't agree with you here because I don't believe Jesus died by the cross. The, the cross did not kill Jesus. And the Muslims believe also uh, Jesus never died. Someone else was crucified instead of. Then I was thinking that my God created great confusion. If God, Allah, my Allah, uh, made one of the disciples look like Jesus and uh, the, the people around him crucified him and uh, the disciple and other people believed that Jesus was crucified, then in a way we make uh, Allah is a cheater or a deceiver. Hmm. He, he lets the Christians believe uh, that uh, someone else cru uh, crucified inside of Jesus. But the truth is, uh, is in the Bible and the Quran. When I studied the Quran and the Bible, I learned from the Bible that the cross did not kill Jesus. He died on the cross, yes, but the, the cross didn't, because I, I read in the Bible clearly that God, uh, the Father, gave him life, life in himself. And only, only by his choice can die. So even if they hang him on the cross for a million years, he would mm. not die if he, 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 he was not willing to die. But all the confusion uh, among Muslims, I believe, uh, uh, it's based on one verse, which is uh, in the in the Quran. It's where uh, chapter four, verse 157. It's uh, talking about the Jewish people or the Jews back then. Uh, hey, the Jews said in boast, "We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the mm. apostle of God." And the Quran continued, "But they, the Jews, killed him not, mm. nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. So the Jews did not kill him." nor crucified him or not kill him by the crucifixion, but it's made, so it was made to appear to them. And those who defer therein are full of doubt with no certain knowledge, but mm. only conjectures to follow for of assurity. Again, God is assuring us here, they killed him not. Mm. So when we say the Jews did not kill him, do we understand that he never died? No, it doesn't say that he never died. It says, uh, they killed him not. And I want to share also one statement from Ellen White uh, to understand better the Quran. I think Ellen White's statement is really, really interesting. She said about the, the death of Jesus, but it was not their trust, it was not the pain of the cross that caused the death of Jesus. Remember, I said I don't believe that uh, the cross killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Ellen White said uh, it was not the pain of the cross that caused the death of Jesus. That cry uttered with the loud voice at that moment of death. The stream of blood and water that flowed from his side declared that he died of a broken heart. His heart was broken by mental anguish. He was slain by the sin of the world. You see? Hmm. The Jews didn't kill him. The cross didn't kill him. But he was slain by the sin of the world. And this is exactly what the Quran said. He did not die by the cross. He did not die because they crucified him. But the other verses in the Quran said he died. He died right. of what? Because of what? Because of our sin. We killed him, all of us. Hmm. So this is the main issue. And I know we cannot really explain everything in a few minutes. This is like a debate was going, been going since uh, I don't know how many centuries. So, but... Uh, I think we forgot to mention for the readers or the, 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 the viewers, they can go back and read all the issue in the written form. Yeah. All right. Well, I think maybe somebody is going to ask the question, who are you, Asif? You know, who are you to make these quite astonishing statements? Mm -hmm. And now you just mentioned another person, Ellen White. And... Uh, well, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, so I know about Ellen White. But how is it that actually you mention Ellen White? And is that a source of truth for you? And could you also, at this point, just give a little bit of information, uh, as you told me before, how did you came a little bit to, to know about Christianity, to study these things? And can you read Arabic? And how many years did you actually study? And who are you actually, just to give some information to our viewers about your background. Who I am? Nobody. 
I'm just a simple man who can read and write in a few languages. Uh, and as I said in the beginning, don't trust what I'm saying. Go back and check what mm -hmm. I read. What I read is available to every single Christian and Muslim. Uh, I, I'm nobody. I'm just uh, a reader. I can read in Arabic. I can read in Turkish, English, and I'm learning Norwegian. Uh, it doesn't make me trustworthy. What I'm saying is just my opinion. But I invite everyone to go back and read what I read. The Quran is there in many languages. Mm. The Bible is there in so many languages as well. Yes. Yeah. How I come to know about Ellen White actually all started again like uh, 10 years ago when I met a lady from Norway. And she told me uh, she don't eat pork, she keeps the Sabbath. And uh, I was like, why don't you eat pork? Because she said, because it's forbidden or it's not allowed to eat pork in the Bible. But I said, all Christians eat pork. Why don't you? And she was like, well, I'm turned the Adventist and I, we don't eat pork. We don't drink alcohol, all these things. But I was like, but Christians does all these things. Hmm. Then um, as I become a closer friend with her, she shared a lot of things about me, about uh, her faith and the Seventh-day Adventism. Uh, then when I got this question, who is Jesus Christ, I start to write the Bible. Uh, Ellen White, when I heard first about her, I was making fun of her actually, but as I read her writings, um, hmm. if you want to understand the Bible, read Ellen White. Hmm. Compare what Ellen White is saying with the Bible and you will get much better understanding. Uh, Ellen White to me is... Uh, a huge door to understand the Bible in a better mm. way. Well, well I, I have to stop you uh, here just uh, for one second because uh, I find it very interesting and amazing that this statement comes from you, actually, which you're considering yourself still a Muslim. If you want to understand the Bible, please read the Ellen White the books. Uh, Unfortunately, as a matter of fact, a lot of Seventh-day Adventists have the opposite idea. So I hope that people, uh, at least some of them, will actually listen to you and your statement because, as you say, it actually did help you to understand the Bible and even the Quran better. Is that what you're saying? Yes, hmm. absolutely. And especially in this statement I just read, when I read the Quran, uh, and the Quran says the Jews did not kill Jesus and he did not die by uh, the cross. Then I read Ellen White and says he died by our sin. Our sin make, uh, it caused his heart to be broken. And uh, so even Ellen White helped me to understand the Quran better or confirming the, what, is, what the Quran says in this uh, issue. Uh, and it's not only this. If you read uh, The Great Controversy or uh, pick up any book of her, you will find a wonderful truth. And unfortunately, what you said is true. I noticed it. As I travel in different uh, countries among the Seven Day Adventists, you, as a Seven Day Adventist, generally speaking, you are kind of ashamed of Ellen White. Mm. You don't want to listen to what she's saying or consider her just, uh, yeah, she's a good lady, she writes something, some of them write, but she is more than that. She was more than that. And actually, uh, you should be proud of her, not ashamed mm. of her, as I noticed most of the Seven Day Adventists around the world. Uh, I don't want to say much things, but uh, I would really love to encourage everyone to mm. read Ellen White and stick on what you make, what makes you Seventh Day Adventist, and don't be just another church. We mm. don't need another church in this world. We need the Seventh Day Adventist, the true Seventh Day Adventist. And when I say we, I mean the Muslims. The Muslims need the Seventh Day Adventist. We don't need another church. Mm. Well, th thank you for, for that, uh, that statement, and I hope a lot of Seventh-day Adventists will, will hear especially that statement, and also about Ellen G. White, which is being believed to be a prophet by the Seventh-day Adventists, and the history is, is long. Um, I, I'd like to go just a little bit back to, to our presentation here and um, go a little bit further, um, because it seems that another... Uh, subject that I took up here it's about the resurrection of Jesus you already covered that uh, where the Christianity those who believe in the Bible and, and Jesus Christ of course they believe that in the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, the mainstream idea is that Islam denies the resurrection of Jesus uh, since he did not die you've already 
cover that. Uh, do you want to add some something more about this, or? Yes, I can add the three verses actually from the Quran. According to the Quran, Jesus himself prophesied that he would die and resurrect to life, and that's found in the, the Quran chapter 19, verse 33. And then God stated that he, God, would cause him, Jesus, to die, and that's found in Quran chapter 3, verse uh, 55. Hmm. Uh, after his ascension to heaven, Jesus stated that God had caused him to die, if you go to Quran chapter 5, verse, um, verse 117. So these three verses, first of them, uh, Jesus was himself prophesying about his death and resurrection. Then the other verse says that God caused him to die. And this last one that Jesus stated that God caused him to die as well. All right. All right. So it's like the 19, 1933, 355, and 517. These three verses confirm that Jesus died and raised to life and taken to heaven. And the Quran also states that he will come back. Okay. The this is very interesting. And uh, why would you say, why would you be why do you believe it's it's the wrong idea about the, the this denial of, of the death of, and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, within Islam, is it because, well, let me let you answer, yeah. Why we believe so? Because this is the whole issue. Hmm. If we don't believe that Jesus died, we are done. Hmm. And of course, Satan is working and he will focus on the main issue and the details, just the details. So even if the Quran is clear, even if the Bible is clear, for him of saying that, I believe most of the Christians also denying that Jesus died. Hmm. And if you want me to go a little uh, further, when you say Jesus Christ is Almighty God, He is Almighty God, Immortal God, then we, we end up that He cannot die. You see, hmm. when we yeah. believe in three gods, co echo co eternal then he is immortal, he cannot die. Then who died? The human Jesus only. God hmm. Jesus never died. Hmm. So we end up with the human sacrifice. In a way, and this is not what we're doing right now, we are here to talk to the Muslims, to, to encourage Muslims, but in a way also Satan played this game with the Christians and let them believe that Jesus did not really die. He's hmm. not really the son of God. He cannot even be the son of God because he's just another God. And hmm. uh, in a way, also the Christians denying that of Jesus. And the same game that Satan is playing with us as a Muslim, he's playing also with the Christians. Yeah. Most of the Christians are actually denying the death of Jesus by saying that he is Almighty God, immortal God. But we know that Jesus is the Son of God and hmm. he can die because God the Father was still in control when yeah. he died. Yeah. Well, just again, I'm mentioning here, we're just kind of scratching the surface. Uh, we're not trying here to go in a very in-depth uh, theological conversation here, uh, Christianity versus Islam. That's, that's not the purpose of this uh, presentation. The main purpose is to, to look into some of these differences, maybe, and also some of uh, the similarities uh, in between Christianity and Islam, but most of all, uh, your uh, experience. Uh, from Islam to Christianity, from the Quran to the Bible, and actually merging uh, these two books, as I understand you, just uh, correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Now, the next uh, subject uh, we're going to take a little bit up here is the means of uh, salvation, as it is being mentioned here on this uh, slide, which I'm going to put up here, where the Christianity is by faith, accept Christ as Savior, uh, Protestant and God is that's the Protestant view uh, and God is the final judge of our life in accordance with his will uh, Islam is believing in one God that's at least the mainstream idea again follow the five pillars of faith and uh, also the good deeds are part of uh, the salvation process within uh, Islam do, do you have any comments to that well, the salvation issue, another uh, great problem among Christianity and uh, Islam. Uh, it's not only between us as uh, Christian and Muslims, but even in, in Christianity, I know uh, some Christians uh, have totally different idea about salvation. 
but I can say uh, in the in the Quran, uh, the salvation by work or believe in one God followed by bliss, that will say me that's not really 100% true. Yes, of course, uh, our work counts, but uh, as I study the Quran, uh, the basic uh, things for my salvation is faith. If I have faith and uh, do uh, work of righteous, then I'll be saved. And this is exactly what I read uh, in the Bible. Uh, faith without work is that, as James said. Hmm. So uh, I have no problem with this. And uh, again, I can mention many uh, verses in the Quran and the Bible says the same. Uh, you have to have faith and work righteous because uh, Satan, according to Christianity and Islam, has a great faith. He believes in God. He believes in whatever we, we know. He, he more expert than us. But mm. his faith doesn't really make him any better yes. than Satan. You know what I mean? So mm. me as a Muslim and you as a Christian, just to have faith, uh, we have to show that faith by work. And that's what I understand in the Bible and also from the Quran. The same issue, no trouble. We can go in details, but I would left this and leave this to the readers. They can go and search. And if they need uh, any uh, clue how, where to begin, again, the, the books that um, I put it together, they can give us uh, or give them as a start yeah. of uh, yes. study. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's correct. So just to to finish uh, before we go forth with uh, with your book, it's uh, uh, the subject of eternity, Christianity, uh, differences between Christianity and Islam's. Uh, it seems to be quite similar here. Eternal heaven, eternal paradise, uh, eternal hell. Some Christians, and that's in my view a total misunderstanding. That's not what the Bible is stating. Uh, eternal loss, non-existence, others. Uh, this is where I am standing. And uh, it seems that there is uh, a belief within Islam uh, about eternal hell. That's uh, known symbols doesn't have uh, that much influence uh, on our salvation. Uh, <clears throat> there are some views of fellow Abrahamic religion, which is Christianity and Islam, mostly uh, Christ in Christianity believe that Islam is a false religion. Uh, Islam, on the other side, are stating uh, some Christians are respected as fellow believers, but with wrong beliefs and only uh, partial revelation. Again, this is the mainstream um, idea and differences between uh, Christianity and Islam. Uh, do, you, do you have some comments on this? Yes, uh, I would love to say something about eternal hell. Uh, I'm standing next to you in that understanding. All right, of I'm course, uh, there is eternal hell, but what it means to be eternal? That's the question. Because as you mentioned also among the, the great part of the Christian that actually believe in eternal hell, that uh, they will live forever in, that, uh, in, in hell. Mm -hmm. And so does the Muslim. We believe, or generally Muslims believe, that we will be eternally tortured in hell. But this is not what I find in the Bible and the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, what I find actually what uh, you believe uh, to non-exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, that hell actually exists uh, in our heart when, when I will understand God the Father and what he did for me, for my salvation, and yet I choose to be with Satan, and that cost me eternal loss, then uh, it will feel like a hell in my heart. And uh, I don't believe God has any pleasure to torture me again and again, but to lose me, to lose me, to lose the, the chance to be with God forever is more than painful, more than any other yeah. fire. So that's the, uh, the that's the the, the real uh, pain that we will suffer if we not to choose to, to be with God. Yeah. When it's come to uh, what the Christians or the Muslims believe, the, some Christians are respectful uh, or respected as fellow believers, but with uh, wrong beliefs. Again, I don't find this in the Quran. Uh, the Quran is condemning the Christian in many ways. Uh, that's so clear uh, that only the Christians actually it's condemning also the Jews that they don't follow what God 
uh, told them to do. They don't uh, believe this Christ is the Messiah, for example, the Jew, and uh, the Christian, um, they get lost in very early stage of their faith. But uh, I have a one single verse in the Quran says uh, a lot about uh, the Christians or the people of the book. In chapter 3, verse 113 and uh, 14 and 15, uh, it says not all of them are alike. It's talking about the Christian and uh, people of the book. Not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are portion that stands for the right. It says they rehearse the signs of Allah or the signs of God all night long. And they perceive themselves in adoration. They believe in God and the last day. They enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And they have an evolution and all good works. Mm -hmm. They are in the rank of righteous. Of the good that they do, nothing will be rejected of them. For God knows well those that do right. So according to these verses, there are a small group of uh, uh, Christians. Or people of the book, they are doing the right things and they are righteous. God says they are righteous, yet we Muslims believe that all the Christians are wrong. So either we are wrong or God is wrong, because when God says there are some people are righteous and we are all wrong, don't you think we are making God wrong? Hmm. And well, remember what I said. A while ago, I said, please be Seventh-day Adventist and just don't be another church. Because you, a truly uh, Seventh-day Adventist, confirm that th this verse is true. Hmm. I can right. talk about it until morning, but I will yes. stop here. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's very interesting. So um, just the map here we have on, on the spread of uh, Christianity, Muslims and the Jewish population. That's something which is available online, so everybody can go online just to, uh, to give an idea. And um, just some numbers here, two billion it is being believed. That's just a number as well as Islam 1.3. Uh, in the US, 159 million, uh, 1.1 million uh, Muslim population. Um, now, <clears throat> We're going to go a little bit more into some very interesting details here. And um, I just want to mention again, I hope the sound is back and the sound is better on our live stream. Anyway, we have recorded this and uh, so uh, it's going to, to be available. We're also going to make available uh, your book, Asif. Uh, there will be a link. Uh, in the comments or beneath, uh, above the comments on our YouTube the video later where you can actually go and download. Um, as you mentioned to me before, you will be more than happy to offer this book uh, free of charge, especially to our friends, uh, the Muslims. Also, I wanted to underline that one of the reasons we do this uh, special video and special interview, which I'm very thankful to you, is that uh, for a very long time, it has been on, on my heart and here at, at Light Channel to, to do something to minister for the Muslim population, especially here in Denmark, but also in, in the whole Scandinavia now, because we do this in English uh, for the whole entire world, Muslim population. It has been for the last maybe 10 to 15 years, uh, kind of agenda through the, the whole mainstream media to, to pinpoint all the negative stuff within Islam and uh, to kind of a steer of, uh, of, of this religious hate, which has been uh, done a lot uh, in, within the media. And with this presentation, hopefully, for the few people that, hopefully many people that are going to see this presentation, uh, hopefully we, we truly believe that you're going to study this, you're going to look more deeply into uh, this presentation and all the information which uh, we are providing you and read the Quran and, and read the Bible and, uh, and see where God is going to lead you. Uh, try to listen to Asif's experience. And uh, <clears throat> now we're going to go a little bit uh, deeper into our presentation. Sorry. And I would like you to just give a brief introduction, Asif, to what is being called the five pillar uh, beliefs uh, in Islam. 
So we have the first three here in the on the first slide here. Well, uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention that. Uh, actually, you state them in the wrong way. All right. It's not uh, the pillars of uh, faith, but uh, anyway, what you state is like, uh, I don't know what's called in English, but anyway, uh, these pillars of Islam actually is like a profession of faith, the Shahada, daily prayer Salat, uh, almost giving uh, Zakat or uh, fasting during Ramadan. Psalm and pilgrimage to, to Mecca, Hajj. Uh, but what is interesting, we don't have this in the Quran as a list, as, a, as like Ten Commandments, for example, uh, one, two, three. No, we, this is what uh, later, Christ, uh, later Muslims brought it up and make it the pillars of Islam. And they all mentioned in the Quran, no doubt, that we should uh, make shahada or the profession uh, that there is no God but uh, Allah. And we should pray, and we could also give zakat or uh, go to uh, Mecca in Hajj or fasting. This is all in the Quran, but I don't know why Muslims choose these five, because there are uh, thou shall not kill, for example, or we have to look after the orphanage, uh, which is uh, I think more important than going to Mecca. So why these five? I don't understand because there is no list in the Quran. But uh, even uh, they don't list it, some Muslims, early Muslims, obviously, they bring this five. Uh, they are fine, that's good. But according to me, if I would choose, I will choose like, uh, you should not kill, hmm. you should not steal, you should not uh, do all these mischief uh, things or look after the orphanage, uh, all these things. Mm -hmm. So you're actually pointing more into the Ten Commandments, uh, which are mentioned in the Bible and... Some of them are also mentioned yeah, in the Quran. All of them. All mm. of them in the Quran. So why yeah. don't we choose more important things? Like going to Mecca, mm. of course, is nice, good. Mm. But I think looking after uh, a little boy without father and mother is more important. Mm -hmm. So why don't we put that as the pillars of Islam instead of this going to, to, to Mecca? Okay, so this is more like... Ah, uh, just a simple man. So, yeah. Yeah. But, so, so, but what I was going to say, this is not stated in the Quran like uh, mm -hmm. pillars of Islam. This is what the later generation, early Muslims, let's say, who choose to make these five pillars. And uh -huh. so they are fine, but I think there are more important uh, mm -hmm. commandments in the Quran that can be the pillars of Islam. Yeah, all right. And that's so, just my opinion. Okay, it's a very important point to, to underline. Um, can you can you you made some statements and I, I as I remember I was reading your book um, you made some statements about what Islam as a word means and and Muslim can you uh, comment on this as we have here on our slide the Arabic word Islam and Muslim literally means surrender and the reconciliation and have their roots in the word peace and salvation. Uh, this is what it means like when you are a muslim you are submitting yourself to god yeah islam is the submission or the way of god not so just like to choose another uh, religion no this is the religion of god including the christianity and the judaism because uh, both uh, way or uh, i call them steps actually god gave us revelations that the old testament was all about jesus christ the new testament is jesus christ Mm -hmm. Then the Quran is leading back to, to, to Jesus Christ also. So this is three steps or three revelations uh, basically teaching the same and teaching us how to be Muslim mm -hmm. in Arabic and how to surrender ourselves to God in, in English. All right. All right. Thanks. Well, um, one of the statements you're making in your book uh, is that I had never thought about how I came to know that the Bible had been corrupted. So now my question is how important it is for both Muslims and Christians to study their beliefs according to whatever they believe is the holy book or the, the, the source of truth before uh, jumping into any conclusion. You just mentioned a while ago how the Western media is extreme, extremely going against Islam and Muslims recently. And this is not just for fun. I think uh, whoever behind this uh, war, let's say, against Islam and Muslims is uh, mm -hmm. 
they know what they are doing. Hmm. Uh, and when I read the Bible, uh, I read the verse um, in Revelation it says, "Come out of her, my people." God's calling His people out of her, or the false uh, church, let's say. And yeah. they come, they came out of her. And I believe personally, the end time, the final work will be with those people that God called them, God's people that being called out of her and a group of people that came from Islamic background. Because uh, when we study Isaiah 61, and that's another story, but I, I studied that with many Seventh-day Adventists uh, and there are strong clues that in the end time, group of people of the book and group Muslims will finish the work. Mm -hmm. When you come to question how on earth I came to believe in the Bible that corrupted, because we believe everyone, every single Muslims, uh, ordinary Muslims or scholar or imams, they always believe and teach us that the Bible is corrupted. And uh, I never think about it just, just because the imam said so, of course it's so. And also the Western media or let's say the Western lifestyle also supports this belief. Because when we look at you as a Christian in the Western world, all this uh, drinking, alcohol, eating pork, believing in strange gods uh, or mystery gods, let's say, and trying to force that uh, this is in the Bible, we have two choices. Either to study the Bible and show you that you are wrong, or uh, the easy way to say the Bible is corrupted. Mm. Because uh, when you say that you can eat pork, and the Quran clearly says, for example, just what the Quran says the pork is dirty, we should not eat it, it can make us sick. Mm. Or the Sabbath, for example, when we read the Sabbath so holy in the, in the Bible, and then the majority of Christians don't follow what the Sabbath uh, should supposed to be. Mm. Then again, you, you gave us, you gave us as a Christian, many reasons to believe that the Bible is corrupted. Mm. But yeah. as I said, 10 years ago, when I started to, to try to understand who is Jesus Christ, and I start to, to read the Bible and the Quran, uh, many times I gave up on the Bible because I thought uh, this is cannot be from God, especially when I was reading Daniel's book. I couldn't understand what uh, those uh, dreams uh, means. Then when uh, a nice man uh, explained to me, of course, it makes sense. And it's become my jumping point, to my, my whole point to the Bible. So, yeah, I used to believe that the Bible was corrupted. But when I studied the Bible and the Quran, uh, I find the opposite. That the Quran says it cannot be corrupted because it's God's word. And God promised us to, to, to protect his word. So there is no place in the Quran actually mentioning that the Bible is corrupted. Uh, you should not read the Torah or the Gospels because there is nothing there. I mean, it has been corrupted. Is that so? It's just the opposite. Actually, the Bible encourages mm. us again and again. And uh, not only encourages us, it's like it's a statement of faith for us to believe in the Bible. If the Bible is corrupted, of course, God will say stay away from it. Hmm. But as I gave the verses uh, in chapter 263, I believe, uh, and we can go back and remember the verse. It says yeah. we should, we have to, we must believe in the Bible. So how God can ask me to believe in something that hmm. is corrupted? And other verses says, you as a Christian, you have nothing right unless you keep what mm -hmm. the Bible says. You, you mean in the Quran? That's so the statement in the Quran? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. The Quran says, you as a Christian, you have nothing right unless you keep what the Bible says. I believe mm -hmm. in chapter... I should find that. Yes. I should All find right. that and that will okay. yes. All right. Well, an another thing is that, as you mentioned before, this is not going to make you popular. And it's not going to make us popular as a, as, a, as a small TV station here in Denmark, as a Christian uh, station. But this is not our purpose because... It's not just because we just want to go against the mainstream, but we want to go by the book. Uh, that's our purpose here at Light Channel. And, and as I understand you, as I'm, I'm listening to you and, and reading your, your book, this is also uh, your purpose. So you're going very much against mainstream uh, Islam and mainstream uh, whatever Muslims believe out there. At the same time, you're also making a quiet, profound statement, which is... Uh, 
available not just for Muslim but also for Christian, do not believe whatever your imam or your priest or your pastor is saying just because they say so, but go back to your holy book. Is that what you're say saying? Absolutely, absolutely. God with his own finger right on the stone that you should remember Sabbath and keep it holy. And now we have almost 2 billion Christians who do, do the opposite. Mm. So I can be popular and say, yeah, well, just enjoy your Sunday. But I said, no, go and see what God says. Mm. I, I'm not after anything. I'm just telling people what I find in the Bible and the Quran. And the Bible and the Quran, as we said, it's, it's, it's there for everyone. All right. so I have no interest whatsoever in any uh, popularity. And I, mm. it doesn't really please me also to go against the mainstream because I don't want to create problem. I don't want to create any confusion. Mm. But this is the truth. This is what I believe at least to be the truth. And it's stated in the Quran. As a Muslim, I believe in the Quran. And it's stated again in the, in the Bible. Mm. So why on earth I have to believe in the pastor who told me to go and keep it holy when God says, Thou shalt remember the Sabbath and keep mm. it holy. Yeah. You see, and this is a sign actually, the sign between me and God mm. that, that to remember the Sabbath. So it's not like I'm doing this on purpose just to be a uh, problematic, let's say, go against yeah. the mainstream. No, but this is what God told me in the mm. Bible and the Quran. And yeah. I share it with the people. Mm. And that's why I want to mention again that, as as you will see here on on the PowerPoints, there are quotations. These are from uh, Asif's book, and which can be downloaded later on. And I want to make a very important uh, statement here that everything here you're backing it up with uh, verses from from Quran and and sometimes from the Bible. So this state, uh, the next one here, the next question I want to ask you: those who have become victims of this uh, form of religion often develop hatred against religion in general. And my question for you is that how important it is for both Muslims and Christians to study their beliefs, again, be before jumping into religious conclusions. You've been covering this already. Just a uh, few thoughts, if you have on this. When I write this uh, few sentences, I think I was thinking about those who um, who are Christian and become Muslims, and uh, there are many also who are Muslims and become Christian. And uh, both of them now, they hate the other side. Mm. If you Google it, you will find so many Muslims now, they call Islam is from Satan, and uh, we should never touch the, the Quran and all this nonsense. I believe if they understand the Bible, they will understand the Quran. If mm. they understand the Quran, they will not call them now something else, because me as a Muslim and you as a Christian, I see no difference between us. If you really truly follow what the Bible says, and if I really truly follow what the Quran says, not what the Imam says mm. or the other Muslim says, no, go back to the Quran and follow the Quran. So we don't need to jump from box to box mm. to be saved. What we mm. need is to submit to God. Okay. And you can call your God, God, I can might call my God, Allah. As long as we obey him, we are truly believers. Mm. But just calling him Allah and recognize him as the mighty doesn't save Satan, doesn't make him any better. Mm. So those who were Muslims now and convert and become a Christian, they are full of hate against us. Mm. They hurt us a lot. They, they insult our prophet, they insult our book and they think they will save us by doing that mm. and actually they are just doing the opposite because mm. when you when you insult me my book my holy prophet my my holy book my my everything do you think i will take you seriously mm. do you think i will listen to you mm. no no even if you are right you are you are building here barriers mm. when you call quran from satan actually you are serving satan because mm. the Quran full of verses that can lead us back to Jesus, can mm. lead us back to the, the Bible, and there we will find our Savior. Mm. So you, as a Christian or ex-Muslim, become a Christian. Actually, you are destroying many ways for Muslims to go back. And right. that's what I was trying to say. They are full of hate because they are insulted without even understanding what his purpose. They are insulting our Quran, the Holy Quran, that led me back to Jesus, without even understanding it. 
a very important piece of, of advice, which is actually uh, also leading us a little bit to, to the next question here. Uh, based on your statement in your book, which is the Bible is clear on the Sabbath issue, but mainstream Christianity is observing Sunday as a day of rest instead of seven-day Sabbath. Should I judge the Bible by its majority mainstream expression? You've already uh, made some statements about this before, but do you have uh, some some other thoughts on this? Yeah, I think I can just repeat shortly, uh, because when they look on what uh, the Muslims doing, that, that this is all from Satan, and they might be right, we are doing lots of satanic things. Hmm. But when I look at you as Christian, I don't find anything better. Hmm. The Christian world is also full of satanic works. It doesn't mean Christianity is from Satan. Just like the example of Sabbath, how many Christians are observing the Sabbath? Mm. as a holiday or as a rest of day. No, all the Christians, they go uh, on Sunday or they don't get any day. So should I say that this is from Satan just because they don't follow what the Bible says? This is the same with us. We as the Muslims don't follow the Quran. We follow whatever we find in our place. So don't judge Islam by what the Muslims do. And you Muslims don't judge Christianity, but what the Christians do, mm. because the Christians and the Muslims, we are all human beings. We are all sinner. We are all wrong. But God's word is the truth. Mm. Very, very important piece of uh, advice uh, indeed. Uh, I think we're going to uh, jump over the next question, unless you have some comments. Who is Jesus Christ? You already uh, made some statements on this here. Um, do you have any other comments? Um, this is based on your, again, your book. I was reading on page 9 um, that in your religious experience and quest to find the truth possible, God led you to the question, who is Jesus Christ? And uh, that was um, that was a struggle for you, as you mentioned before. A huge struggle. Mm. It was a huge struggle because uh, the Quran uh, teach something is not so clear. As I mentioned, the word the Messiah, and when I read the, the Muslims, what it says about the Messiah, uh, for example, there is, uh, I don't remember who said so, but he says, uh, because Jesus was like uh, tapping people, and that's meh in Arabic, yumsah, or tapping like this. So that's why uh, people called him al-Masih, or the, the Messiah. But in the Quran, I find the verse when the angel comes to Mary, says that he will, she will have a boy and he will uh, he will be called Al Masih. Hmm. So even before he become tapping on the word, just like you before you become a doctor, someone call you doctor, it doesn't make sense. So Jesus is the Messiah, and uh, the Quran never um, explained why he is the Messiah, or what it means to be the Messiah. But who is Jesus Christ is the whole issue. Hmm. When we know who is Jesus Christ, I think we will get huge steps towards God. That's so why it's so important, again, to, to read the Quran. And uh, uh, I think the same way it's so important to read the Bible, because without the Bible, we don't understand who is the Messiah. Hmm. So, Well, actually, this is also the main theme of this presentation of this uh, program, because you did find Jesus Christ in the Quran, the first place. Is that correct yeah. understood? Right. Okay. Yeah. And and you're asking your your fellow Muslims uh, and all the Muslims that hopefully is going to watch this presentation to go to the same place and find Jesus Christ. And why is it so? Why is it important to find this Jesus, which you just mentioned, as being the Messiah? Not just for you, for Christians, but for everybody else, and also for Muslims. I think this uh, should be answered by God Himself. Mm. Uh, whatever I say, it might be uh, short or yeah. not explained well. But I believe when uh, we read the Quran uh, and pray earnestly and ask God to answer questions as it is in the Bible, that ask and it will be uh, answered. And uh, God is the source of knowledge. All right. So why it's important for us, I think it's so clear in the Bible and the Quran and the reader must go there and, uh, you know, when, when Jesus was here, the disciples were living with him, 
And when Jesus asked, who is Jesus? Mm. Peter, I believe, answered him in a way that shocked the earth. He said, you are the, 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 the son of the living God. And Jesus said, not the flesh and blood revealed this to you. And that's why I'm saying, I cannot reveal, you cannot reveal this, but God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in heaven can reveal to us. So when we ask God, as God revealed this to Peter, he can reveal it to Asif, to Michael, to any one of us. Hmm. And it is there in the Quran, it is there in the Bible. Just ask God and God will reveal to us who is Jesus Christ and why it's so important to know him. All right. All right. Um, a true student of the Quran needs the Bible. Um, again, this is, uh, I believe, a very important statement which you're making here and most intriguing, I would say, statement uh, for uh, probably a lot of Muslims out there. And I took here on the on the slide, I took actually a verse from the Quran. Of followers of the Bible, you have no valid ground for your beliefs unless you truly observe the Torah and the Gospel, which is the New Testament, and all that has been bestowed from on high upon you by your uh, sustainer, which, of course, it's uh, a reference to God. So would you agree that this would imply for a Muslim to both accept the Bible as an authoritative source of truth, but also use the Bible along with the Quran to uh, better understand God? Well, thank you so much for this word, because this is the word I was going to find. Remember mm. when I said God uh, saying that you have nothing in your uh, belief system or your life's truth unless you observe the Bible. And if the Bible is corrupted, why God asks you to do this? First of all, this I want to say. Then secondly, uh, this is stating uh, clearly for the Christian or followers of the Bible. You have no valid ground for your belief unless you truly observe the Torah and the, the gospel. So this is truth that cannot be denied. You want to be Christian, then you have to observe the Bible. Can we apply this to the Muslims? No, I don't think so, because this is statements made for those who observe the Bible. Mm -hmm. But there are at least, as I remember, 12, 15, I don't know how many verses says that we have to have faith in the Bible. The Muslims asking me, and I mentioned two of them earlier, so uh, the, the, the Quran is so clear to me as a Muslim. I cannot be a Muslim unless I have a faith in the Bible. Some Muslims says we have faith in the original, uncorrupted Bible. I would believe so if the Quran said so. Mm -hmm. The Quran says we have to have faith in the Bible. And this verse says, even you, Christian, you have nothing right unless you observe what the Torah and the Bible says. So if the Bible is corrupted, why my God ask you to observe the Bible? All right. All right. Thank you for that. Your next statement here I'm taking up is, unfortunately, almost every Muslim believes that the Bible has been corrupted uh, even though the Quran confirms the veracity of the Bible. Uh, and you actually take up this verse from, from the Bible, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding, which is from Proverbs 3, to, uh, chapter 3, verse 5. So your particular yeah. decision, uh, did it have an impact on your relation with your family, friends, uh, religious leaders? Well, so now I don't have any problem with any Muslims because, uh, again, this is not my uh, opinion. This is not my brought up. This is what I understand from the Quran. Of course, uh, many of them don't agree with me. Even mm -hmm. if they don't say it in my face, uh, I can still uh, see it. And some of them say clearly that I kind of have a misunderstanding or I should go and listen to what the Imams or the scholar says, but I mm -hmm. never read this in the Quran. Uh, the Quran tell me that too, I should ask God and the, the Bible says even don't lean to understanding because in the beginning I understand many things and when I study more about uh, certain issues in the Quran and the Bible then I understand that my understanding was wrong mm -hmm. and I changed my mind and uh, had a better uh, Quranic or better biblical view so I, I encourage every Muslim to do the same all right. Don't listen to our, our, our understanding because I can see something and then uh, have a different opinion on it. Hmm. All right. Just want to mention if uh, anyone watching live, there is uh, the chat window on the 
on your left side uh, and you can uh, post questions there that uh, if we can we can answer here or maybe at a later point the next statement which I want to take from your book here is uh, if we read the Quran through the eyes of the Bible we will have a better understanding on many topics and you mentioned this verse which is from Torah the Old Testament I am the Lord thy God thou shall have no other gods before me did you find any support for this understanding among other Muslims you already mentioned that you have a struggle well, with that. This is, uh, I am the Lord and thou shalt not uh, have any God <laughs> before me. I think this is where I agree with the mainstream of Islam. <laughs> we all believe in one God and no one uh, next to him or equal to him. Uh, yeah, I know many Christians will not agree with me. They'll say, no, Jesus is equally God with Jesus of God. But again, this is not what the Bible says. The Bible mm -hmm. says that God is greatest of all. Uh, he he created or he brought forth Jesus, as the Bible says. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there is no one echoes to the Father, not even Jesus. And Jesus says that the Father is greater, greater than all. Mm -hmm. So all right. the mainstream uh, Muslims believe in uh, one God and he is uh, above all. All right. Okay, just a couple of uh, questions I have here uh, before we finish uh, tonight here. Your statement here is that, for example, the Quran acknowledges Jesus Christ as the Messiah, but gives so little information about him compared to the Gospel. So, again, the Bible, which is confirmed by the Quran, and a lot of verses here, which I took actually from your book, uh, a lot of Bible verses here, so whoever is watching this, uh, I do recommend to, to buy a Quran, whatever possible. I do have one at home. I think it's very interesting to read, especially these verses, uh, even as a, as a Christian. But my question is that, is Jesus the promised Messiah? Is that uh, what is the information which you have found in the Quran? Well, I never see a statement in the Quran that uh, Jesus is the promised Messiah. But as I studied the Quran, um, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And uh, when you study the Quran uh, according uh, to how God revealed it to us, in the first uh, few years, it was in Mecca, and mm. the huge struggle between it was among the Muslims and the pagan. And the pagan has 360 gods, and God called the Muslims to believe in, in one God. So in the first uh, couple of years, God was focusing on on the Muslims to brought them back to the, the, the first steps that thou shalt not worship another god but me, God Allah or God the Father. Mm. But when the, the pagans start to um, uh, torture or uh, persecute the Muslims, the Muslims flee to Medina, a city more uh, south, no, west Saudi Arabia, I believe. And in that city, the majority was uh, Jewish. Hmm. Jewish people who denied Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And there God started to reveal to Prophet Muhammad about Isa al-Masih or Jesus Christ. You see, when uh, the Muslims was among the pagan, those who worshipped many gods, God focused on one God. Hmm. If you study the Quran, you will find the main topic in that uh, revelation was one God. And when the Muslims moved to the uh, city of Medina, which is the, the Jewish was occupied mostly there, God starts to reveal about Mary, about Mary, the Messiah. And it says, Jesus, the son of Mary, is the Messiah. In the face of the Jews that was denying or mm. calling him a false prophet or false Messiah. But does we find, do we find a statement that Jesus is the promised Messiah? As, um, as much as I remember, no. But he is the Messiah. But again, what it means to be the Messiah, no explanation whatsoever in the Quran. But mm -hmm. the Quran says, if you have a doubt of what we are revealing, ask those people who read the Bible. And the yeah. Bible is confirmed again and again in the Quran. So to understand who is the Messiah, the true students of the Quran can go, may go, should go, have to go and ask the people of the book or ask actually the, Quran, the Bible itself, and we will find what it means to be the Messiah, and we will know about 
the promised Messiah. But no, there is no yeah. statement that Jesus is the promised Messiah, as I remember in the graph. All right. Uh, you actually just uh, jumped into your one of the last statements from your book, which I want to bring up here tonight, that the Quran, I'm going to put it up here, says that the Bible is the word of Allah, and the same Quran says no one can change his word. And there are some statements here about the Torah, uh, the Psalms, and uh, the Gospels which uh, is the Arabic uh, word for the gospel of Jesus. That's also, we have the verse here. Um, the Injil. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, does the Quran clearly states that God's word is unalterable? Yes, in mm. many places. That, that's the uh, short so answer. Everyone can change his yeah. word. Yes, of course. And uh, the reader will have no difficulty to find those verses because it's all around the, the Quran. And uh, more than that, actually, uh, I think that's coming in the next slide, so I will just wait. All right. So the next one here is that the Quran itself states that God would make sure the Bible would be uh, protected from corruption. And you're referring yes. to a verse here from Quran uh, chapter 5, verse 9, where it says, We have without doubt sent down the message, and we will assuredly guard it. And that's, of course, from corruption. Does it yes. refer to the Quran or the Bible or both books in your in your view? Well, general uh, or the mainstream of Muslims will tell you that it is about the Quran. And this is how I used to believe for many years. Uh, which is um, as, um, it, it, interestingly, God didn't say that we revealed the Quran and we uh, will protect it. No, it says the message, and that word, the message in Arabic is al zikr. Mm -hmm. And when we read the Quran, uh, uh, the Bible is also al zikr, uh, yeah. Taurat al zikr, it's mentioned clearly. And uh, I can give you, for example, uh, uh, like Quran chapter 15, uh, verse 9, is talking about the, the, the we have uh, doubts sent down the message al zikr. Will assuredly we will, we will guard it. Yeah. And then another verse uh, says, uh, just scroll down, uh, chapter 15, verse 10 and 11, which says, We, God, as God, we did send apostles before the Muhammad, Muhammad among the religious sects of old, but never came an apostle to them, but they mocked him. And next verse is, Yeah, and uh, in chapter 16, verse 43, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I have a problem scrolling down. Yeah. Yeah, chapter 21, verse 7 says, Before thee, before Muhammad, also the messenger we sent were but man, to whom we grant an inspiration. If you realize this not, ask those who possess the message, and this message in Arabic says al zikr in chapter mm -hmm. 21 verse 7. God talking about the messenger and uh, God gave them a message. So if God sent the messenger with the message and another verse in chapter 21 verse, uh, verse 48 also in the past we, God, granted to Moses and Aaron the criterion for judgment and law and message again was zikran. So mm -hmm. God granted to Moses and Aaron. And in verse 40, uh, chapter 40, sorry, chapter 40, verse 53, 54, says, God did aforetime give Moses the book of guidance and uh, we gave the book of inheritance to the children of Israel. A guide and a message, again, was the, the same word that's mentioned in this uh, verse that's in chapter 15, verse 9. What I'm saying, there are so many words in the Quran talking about the Bible, yes. the Old Testament or the New mm. Testament, and it's called it's called the message. So in the Quran, the, Quran uh, the Bible is the message. Mm. And when it says God that he sent the message and he assuredly will guard it, then I believe it will guard the complete message, not only the Quran. But the general mainstream of Islam or the Muslims believe that it's valid only for the Quran, but 
I'm sorry, I don't agree with them. Mm. According to the Quran, according to what I understand from the Quran, God sent the message, which is the Quran and the Bible, and God promised to protect it. Yeah, and this is, this is actually also the last statement that I'm taking up here tonight. I'm going to put it up here, is that the Quran confirms the Bible uh, from your book. And again, you're referring to a verse from Quran, chapter 46, verse 12, where uh, the Quran is stating that before this was the book of Moses as a guide and a mercy, and this book confirms in the Arabic tongue to admonish the unjust and as glad tidings to those who do right. So that's that's your uh, last statement here, which I'm I'm taking up tonight here. So do do you have any comments to add on this, or you just already mentioned? I think it's clear. Hmm. God sent the message. And the message is started with Adam, actually, mm -hmm. when uh, he asked for forgiveness. And uh, it's there. It's in the Bible, in the Quran. God sent it for purpose. God yeah. will save it for next generation. God will never let us go astray without giving us the warning. Mm -hmm. If there is any truth in the Bible and we lost it, then God cannot really judge us. If there is any truth in the Quran and we don't really follow it, then it's our mistake because we are living, we are here. The Bible is not corrupted according to the Quran. The Bible has a great message. It's all about our salvation and mm. the Quran confirming it again and again. And the Quran asks us to go and study it and make and guide us in this study. All right, Asif, thank you very much for uh, taking part of this presentation and joining us from Norway. Um, this was, again, uh, the first part of the, this interview. We're going to have a second part. We're going to announce this uh, shortly uh, on our YouTube channel and our Facebook and on our website, uh, lightchannel.dk. And we'll invite all of you which has been watching this live here or maybe at a later point you're going to watch this video to please do share this with your uh, Muslims friends again uh, just in Denmark alone uh, we have over 300,000 uh, uh, people which uh, do have a Muslim background uh, I'm not sure that all of them do practice uh, uh, their religion but at least they do have a, a Muslim background and in my personal experience, I find it many times much easier to have a religious conversation with Muslims than with a lot of other uh, people that either doesn't have any faith at all or they do have uh, other religions. And I believe that because there's many similarities uh, in between uh, Islam and Christianity probably and also that uh, there is also some background which... Uh, makes it much easier to, to have a conversation uh, with a Muslim also when it comes to uh, the Bible. And I also like to thank you, Asif, for your openness uh, that you have shown here. Uh, again, this is very controversial for a lot of people. We are not here to steer any more you know, animosity against Muslims or against Christians. On the contrary, I uh, would like people to come together and to study together at the end of line, this is a question of life and death, and I'm talking about the eternal life. So thank you again, everybody. We're going to uh, be offline in a few seconds, and uh, see you next time.